forever. Dog. These girls are to die for. This week on the podcast, L.J. Smith's Night World Daughters of Darkness. Welcome to Teen Creeps, the podcast that discusses YA Pulp Fiction. I'm one of your hosts, Lindsay Katoy. I'm one of your hosts, Kelly Nugent. What? what? Smith in the house. Pew, 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 pew. I am hype. Because Ash is the hottest guy we've ever read about ever. I fucking love this book. I love this book. I loved it. Oh my! It was like goo. everything. All the Ash stuff we were missing out on in um, Secret Vampire. Yes, yes. He's um, a very different boy. Ash is funny. He's like foin. He's foin. He's, He's so foin. His eyes are different colors at different times. Uh huh. He also like does the. Thi- it kind of gave me like a fanfic feel. Yeah, because, somebody writing what they wanted Ash yes, to be. Because he was so like um he was like like funny because of his like Im- he would be get embarrassed about things or mm-hmm. like whatever. Also, I liked the main character. I really liked her. She is a little bit of a Mary Sue. A little. A little. Just a touch. A, a touch. That I being said, it was when the little moments like this are what made me go, like, okay, Mary Lynette, just like, fucking settle the fuck down. Um, so just to set the scene yeah. real quick before we get into the larger plot. Yeah. Ash is a vampire. Yes. He's looking for his sister. Yes. He comes to Briar Ridge. Do Briar do Creek. Do do. Briar Creek, <laughs> Oregon. Um AKA find like them and Mad bring Dog them. Creek. Yeah, like holy shit, that place is rife with supernatural so activity. So many different beings. Um, so he's coming to get him. He's like ruthless. He's a fucking womanizer of human women. Mm-hmm. And he eats them probably. Yeah, probably. <laughs> and um he cares all about the family honor. So he's coming to get him and he's like, blah, 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 whatever it cost. And he goes to Mary Lynette and Mark's house their brother and sister, just to ask questions, try to figure out if they've told anyone if they are vampires. Right. Lamia. Yeah, Lamia, which um, is different than made vampires. Yes. They're born they're vampires. They're born vampires. And they're part of the night a very world. cool aspect of these books, I like I that, too. Yeah. I like that, too. Um, and the sisters so, are Rowan, Kestrel, and Jade, yep. which, great names. Fantastic Fantastic. Names. Names. I was like, I want to have three daughters just to name them that. Very good names. God, Kestrel? Oh. 10 out of 10. Chef's, Mwah, kiss. chef's kiss. Love it. I was like, name me Kestrel. <laughs> Can my I change name my name? Kestrel now. Kestrel. Kestrel Nugent. Kestrel Jade. Kestrel Nugent sounds like you're at candy. It does. It's like, like chewy. And every bite of Kestrel Nugent has... <laughs> Kestrel Nugent Nougat. <laughs> yeah. It's chewy and it <laughs> sticks in between every single tooth. Don't eat it if you have dentures. <laughs> that commercial sounded a lot different from the yeah. way I imagined it. I mean, it. yours was like more selling more like items. Classy. It was like mine was like like scary. Y- yours was like Kestrel Nugent, the candy for Hicks. Hi, you might be you might be eating <laughs> Kestrel Nugent if, if your parents are married <laughs> and their brother and sister. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> I haven't gotten to it yet. I haven't gotten to it. Yet. If your parents are married, okay, so here's the set. Okay, so first, mm. your parents, yeah, they're married. Uh huh. But uh huh. They're related. You have Auntie Mommy. Yeah. <laughs> if you have an Auntie Mommy. And a Daddy Uncle. And a dad- <laughs> Switch. Yeah. <laughs> Messing it up. <laughs> uh, anyway. We just ate candy. So we feel great. I am hyped to the No, fuck yeah. Because here's the thing candy. is, I'm hyped on candy. I'm hyped on Ash. Uh, this is a really good book. Mm-hmm. Hi- highly recommend. Um, but yeah, so Jade, oh, Kestrel, and right. Rowan. So, oh, can blah, blah, we blah. warn people? There's baby animal death. I know. And it's within the okay, first, like, again. 20 pages. It's pretty upsetting. Yeah. I do like upsetting. that it kind of made, like, it, it informed us, though, a lot about yeah. these girls. It really added to their character. Mm-hmm. It's like it fleshed out their character for yeah. the reader. Yeah. And Jade reminded me of Drusilla. <gasps> yes. Yeah. Yes. Because she's so fucking weird. She's weird. The other ones are, like normal to interact with yeah and she's like loopy as fuck yeah she's super loopy i wouldn't be surprised if she could like see the future or something yeah except that she's white blonde hair instead of black yeah. hair yeah um so yeah 
blah, blah, blah. They're all there. Uh, Mark's in love with Jade. Jade's in love with Mark. But then, so Ash comes by the house mm-hmm. asking about his sisters. Mm-hmm. Mary Lynette and Mark's stepmother, Claudine, is in the living mm-hmm. room, which we want to talk about her later, I think. Yes. And she's talking to Ash, and she's like, oh, blah, blah, blah. Here's all the, a bunch of information. And Mary Lynette is like, who is this boy in the fucking living room distracting me from my mission to find out if Mrs. B has been killed by her nieces? Because she's rear windowing it. She's very much rear windowing it. She's like looking through her little telescope and she sees the sisters carrying like a body bag Mm -hmm. and burying it in the backyard at at night. And And so she's she's like, like, hmm. And she's very interested in astronomy. Yes. And... So that's why she sees them, which I thought was, you know, good. Yeah. I thought every, everything tied together in an excellent, believable way. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like, so, like, she's fucking interested in astronomy just so she can see them bury the body. Right. No, it, like, really fed into her character and the whole Well, yeah, plot. because there's, like, a part where she's talking about how <clears throat> she's, like, there were times when she would look at this, a star that's very far away and she would get this aching that's like deep within her. Yeah, she that would was, become so moved. Yeah. And like the desire for something more. And like so all of that I thought rang really true mm-hmm. for like almost every teenager feels that way. Mm-hmm. And it makes her like a curious, interesting person. Um, and very, um, you know, scientific. Yeah. Like really and, fo- following rational thought. Yeah. And she's a night owl, which – so she's already into the nighttime, mm-hmm. um, which then she like feels this connection with uh, Ash. Oh yeah, which so, is oh my god. So that's what. Woo, that's what I was about to say. So Mary Lynette goes in the living room. Yeah, and Claudine introduces them, and they shake hands. And I did take a photo of this, so I'll just read it. Please, I'm pulling it up. She's pulling, pulling it, up. it up. So they. I fucking love the way she wrote this. So she walks in the living room. Mary Lynette, this is Ash. She's here to visit with his aunt and sisters. He's here to visit with his aunt and sisters, Claudine said. Ash, this is Mary Lynette, the one who's such good friends with your aunt. Ash got up all in one lovely, lazy motion, just like a cat, including the stretch in the middle. Hi. He offered a hand. Mary Lynette touched it with fingers damp and cold from the Coke can, glanced up at his face and said, Hi. Except that it didn't happen that way. Mm. It happened like this. Mary Lynette had her eyes on the carpet as she came in, which gave her a good view of his Nike tennis shoes and the ripped knees of his jeans. When he stood up, she looked at his t-shirt, which had an obscure design, a black flower on a white background, probably the emblem of some rock group. That's kind of dorky, right? Uh, that, he wears, group. that he wears the, the <laughs> emblem of his club, own his club. club. Yeah. Come on. He's like, I'm in the, I'm in the like Lily Club or whatever. Club. Yeah. And then when his hand entered her field of vision, she reached for it automatically, muttering a greeting and looking up at his face just as she touched it. And this was the part that was hard to describe. Contact. Something happened. Hey, don't I know you? This isn't dialogue, by the way. (laughs) She didn't. That was the thing. She didn't know him, but she felt that she should. She also felt as if somebody had reached inside her and touched her spine with a live electric wire. It was extremely not enjoyable. The room turned vaguely pink. Her throat swelled and she could feel her heart beating there. Also not enjoyable. But somehow when you put it all together, it made a kind of trembly dizziness like. Like what she felt when she looked at the Lagoon Nebula. Or imagined galaxies gathered into clusters and superclustered clusters, bigger and bigger, until size lost any meaning and she felt herself falling. She was falling now. She couldn't see anything except his eyes. And those eyes were strange, prism-like, changing color like a star seen through heavy atmosphere. Now blue, now gold, now violet. Oh, take this away, please. I don't want it. And then they both snap out of it. And he pulls his hand back. He clearly felt the same thing. And then, like, later he's like, oh, like, oh, it's so annoying. I can't believe that this is happening to me. Yeah, let me see if I can find that. So when he's, like, parts. walking around being angsty, like, at night in the, like, like here in the dark. So a little bit, just like a few pages later, we're with Ash's point of view now. Why? Why? (laughs) Why me? Ash was staring at a yellow cedar, weeping into a creek. A squirrel too stupid to get out of the sun was staring back at him. On a rock beside him, a lizard lifted first one foot, then another. It wasn't fair. 
It wasn't right. He didn't even believe it. He'd always been lucky. Or at least he'd always managed to escape a hair, hair's breadth away from disaster. But this time the disaster had hit and it was total annihilation. Ugh. Move over here. <laughs> everything he was, everything he believed about himself, could he lose that in five minutes? For a girl who was probably deranged and certainly more dangerous than all three of his sisters put together? No, he concluded grimly. Absolutely not. Not in five minutes. It only took five seconds. He knew so many girls. Nice girls. Witches with mysterious smiles. Vampires with delicious curves. Shapeshifters with cute furry tails. Even human girls with fancy sports cars who never seemed to mind when he nibbled at their necks. Why couldn't it have been one of them? Well, it wasn't, and there was no point in wondering about the injustice of it. The question was, what was he going to do about it? Just sit back and let fate ride over him like an 18-wheeler? That's the Seinfeld music that I'm <laughs> singing while I wait to see if there's anything else. So anyway, all of this is adding up to the fact that uh, they are soulmates, it turns They're out. They're soulmates. Also, like... Like, actual, legit soulmates. Not like Jade and Mark, who are just in love. Yeah. They're, like, can't, like capital S soulmates. Yeah, like, fire, lightning, yeah. soul connection soulmates, even though neither of them want it to be the case. Yeah. Also, like, um, so she finds out that he's, like, old-fashioned and kind of sexist. And, I loved that part. And she instantly is like, get the fuck out of my house, kicks him in the shins. And then there's a part which I actually thought this part was really funny and it like made him <clears throat> kind of charming, which was, okay, so Mary Lynette saw it again, something in his face that made him suddenly look not fatuous or amiable at all, like the glitter of a knife blade in the, in the light, something that said danger. Oh, go bother someone else, Mary Lynette said. She drew back her foot for another kick. He opened his mouth, then shut it. Still holding his shin, he looked at Claudine and managed a hurt and miserable flirtatious smile. Thanks so much for all your... Go! He lost the smile. That's what I'm doing! He <laughs> limped to the front door. She followed him. Like, I thought that part was, like, very funny. Yeah, and like, there was caught off guard. He's trying to get his swagger back. Yeah. Like, well, thanks for that. I'm going! Yeah, he's like, I am! And then there's, like, another part where he, like, try, uh, the uh, Mrs. Burdock's house... Uh, he doesn't know that the front step has like a fucked up step. And so mm -hmm. like you can fall into it. Yeah. And so like they hear this loud crash and they come out and he's just like in it. And he's like, uh, I fell. <laughs> Which I thought was very cute. Yeah. And uh, I, I I loved this fucking book, dude. I really, really liked it. Uh, I do remember people now when we were talking about liking Ash in Secret Vampire. Because he's like full on like worse Jareth. Yeah. yeah. Worse Julian. Mm-hmm. Um, in Secret Vampire. And so it's like he strolls into Briar Creek, same guy, and mm -hmm. then he shakes a hand with a human and it's his soulmate and he's like, well, okay. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and then he has to be a completely different person. Yeah. Yeah. And I also liked him like kind of warring with how he feels about her, with how he's stubborn and same with her. Um, I I just really I really oh, liked the relationship. That's what I was gonna say. Her being a little bit of a Mary Sue, she's just like too fucking plucky when oh. it comes to Ash. Like, yeah, kicking him in the shin multiple times in different scenes. Even it um, seemed like a very the moment where so they're talking and he's like, she's like, you think I'm weak. And he's like, well, compared to me, you are. And she's like, I can take care of myself. And then later in the book when he's like really trying to endear himself to her, he does the, well, I'll, I'll go out there to fight. And, and then he's like, he catches himself and he says something like, I mean, like, we'll go yeah, out there Yeah, because there will be two of us. And yeah. in her head, she goes, close, buddy, but no cigar. And I was like, shut the fuck up, Mary Lynette. Yeah, she's kind of being contrarian just to be contrarian at points. And it's just a little too, like, women can do anything. It's like, it's one thing to write a strong female character and another to have one constantly, like, spouting off about it. Yeah, she, I mean, again, this book it's that the way that she's written makes this book feel a little dated because mm -hmm. then it's like it does feel very it's so like, like 90s girl yeah power. like it is very I girl loved power. the subtlety of when she finds out or he says the thing about um 
an old fashioned family. Yeah. I love, love, love how it's handled then. Oh, right. When she's like, oh, I see what you're saying. Because he's, oh, it's when yeah. he's like, I want to know who my sister's friends are. Friends are. And he's, and she's like, why? Oh, and I guess you care about who your aunt is friends with too? Mm hmm. Oh, because it was so, it's like you and Mark, and Mark would be your brother. That's right, Claudine said from the doorway. Any brothers or sisters? Mary Lynette blinked. What, you're taking a census? Ash did a bad imitation of his former lazy smile. I just like to keep track of my sister's friends. Why? To see if you approve or something? Actually, yes, he did the smile again with more success. We're an old-fashioned family. Very old-fashioned. Mary Lynette's jaw dropped. Then, all at once, she felt happy. She didn't need to think about murders or pink rooms or what this guy knew. All she needed to think about was what she was going to do to him. So you're an old-fashioned family, she said, moving a step forward. Ash nodded. And you're in charge, Mary Lynette said. Well, out here, back home, my father is. And you're just going to tell your sisters which friends they can have. Maybe you get to decide your aunt's friends, too. Actually, I was just discussing that. He waved a hand toward Claudine. Um, and then it, this weird moment happens with Claudine. Do you Claudine remember this? and uh, like, when Claudine's talking to Mary Lynette. So... So Mary Lynette is thinking this to herself. Yes, you were, Mary Lynette realized. She took another step toward Ash, who was still smiling. Oh, no, Claudine said. She flapped her dish towel once. Don't smile. Almost like she knows what's about to go down, mm. and she's trying to warn Ash, like, no, 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 you don't understand. Yeah. Like, you are really pissing her off. Yeah. And I thought that was good and subtle mm -hmm. of, like, oh, you're a fucking sexist. Mm -hmm. Now I don't have to worry about anything. I'm just going to treat you like a sexist mm -hmm. versus like close buddy, but uh, no cigar. Yeah, it does feel a little bit like it just feels like um, and, and the same thing with the shin kicking. It feels like something that someone very young would think is like, kind of cool, you know, like, oh, well, the, you like, know, so yeah, strong. yeah. When it's like, I don't know, like to me, it just seems a little bit impetuous and childish of her. Yeah, it was like a super basic yeah, feeling of strength or just like hokey. It was hokey. That's what it was. It just felt super cheesy, strong female yeah. character instead of just strong female character. I did like the part where uh, when he's like, hey, you know what? Like, don't hang out with my sisters. Mm -hmm. And she's like, why? And he's like, because you'd be a bad influence on her. And she's like, Ash, get bet and die. Yeah. I did like when she said that part. I liked that too. It was but just a the kicking thing moments. was like not that cute. It's It felt like, you know what it is? The kicking thing felt like someone who thinks she's being so cute. Yeah. You know what? It, like a girl being like, I'm like, like so like. Like now you're in for it, buddy. Yeah. Or like, like someone that like slaps guys too much. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Like the kind of girls like, I mean, I think this was more of something in high school that like I saw this type of girl and I did this kind of stuff too, which was like, um, I'm going to be flirty, which means I'm going to be mean to you. And then like, I'm going to like, like, you know, like punch you on the arm and stuff. And like, cause I'm like a fun girl that like, <laughs> like, likes to be punchy. I it's, don't know. It just struck me as like, I think I can get away with this cause I'm so cute. So the movie uh, of Annie, the musical, the Carol Burnett one, uh -huh. um, when Annie is like, um, like she runs into the boys in the alley tormenting Sandy mm -hmm. and she like rolls her sleeves up and he's like, what, what are you like, who's going to do anything about it? And she's like, you have to answer to me. And it's like kind of the same way mm -hmm. of like, I picture Mary Lynette putting up her fist and going, do you want a knuckle sandwich? Yeah, it she's feels like, cheesy. It's, it's so it's cheesy. cheesy. It's cheesy. But most of the book, it's just a couple very moments. very cool. Yeah. But there were these, I was, it was like laying it on a little too thick that she was like, I'm not about to be bossed around by you. Yeah. It's just like, well then just like, don't be bossed around by him she rather just, than she's like written a little weird, too young he, i mean she is young that's the thing it's more it's like an authorly like it's just cheesy it's cheesy just like dial down the cheese it is a little too cheesy um uh, that being said like I, I think she does have a right to like feel annoyed with him and angry with him because you know he hates humans <laughs> he thinks they're vermin maybe that's what the difference is the moments when it's cheesy is her being like 
annoyed by him. But it's like, okay, well, he's like a fucking vampire. He just found out he's your soulmate. Anger, I get. Be yeah. angry. Don't be like so annoyed with him. That's a, the, you know it's what? Like, he's not a chauvinist pig. He's a vampire. Yeah. I mean, well, so this like, and I think this kind of goes back to what I was saying before about how this feels like fanfic. It does mm-hmm. in the good ways and in the bad ways. Exactly. It's like creating conflict to so that the slow burn is slower yeah. and burnier. Yeah. And then it's like, because uh, like, oh, well, they have to hate each other. You know, they have to. But it's like, yeah, it has to. I don't know. I mean, really good fanfic does it really well. But I have read quite a bit of fanfic that's like, I'm mad at you for dumb reasons. Yeah. And then it's like, meh. And then it's just to create conflict. Yeah. So I think that's it. It yeah. feels very fanfic and very cheesy during those parts. Because it, it took it out of um, a scarier, more ominous tone. Yeah. And then it took it Such to a this tone like, shift. kind of goofy place. Yeah. Yeah. So that yeah. is actually my only criticism yeah. of the whole book. I was shocked by the twist. I didn't know it was the werewolf. Yeah, I got really thrown off the path yeah. by that. I thought it was Bunny. I would start, th- she did a good job of making me think it was legit going to be Bunny. Yeah. So like basically, okay, so when the sisters arrive, because they, they were uh, corresponding, they're trying to leave the night world because they don't like it there. Because the night world is very... Uh, old fashioned, and they're like expected to dress a certain way, yeah, and it's like, like it's human old fashioned, yeah. not just yeah. It's, it's like, like you like, are told who to marry, yeah. and you're and all the men have the say of your life, yeah. And they're just like these pretty little caged birds, and so they want to leave. Um, and so uh, Kestrel, Rowan, and Jade. Uh, Rowan is the oldest. Yes, Rowan's the oldest. She's o- old and wise, mm-hmm. and she has brown hair. And yep. then Kestrel has like blonde golden hair. Mm-hmm. And she's like fierce. Feisty. Yeah, fierce and yeah. feisty. And then Jade has like white blonde hair and she's like dreamy and sweet. Loopy and sweet. Yeah. So. Oh, they, yeah. That's what the animal death is. Yeah. Is with Jade. It's with Jade. So they come to, uh, they the book opens with them like arriving in. Where was it? Briar, Briar Creek. Creek. And they're trying to get to uh, their aunt's house. Um, and it's Mrs. Burdock. These two guys pick them up and like try to rape them. And then they just like eat their blood. And then like <laughs> eat their yeah, blood. They like eat their blood and then they like drain their memories. Instead of drink their blood, <laughs> they just like chow down on their <laughs> blood. Chomp, chomp, chomp on some blood. <laughs> nom, nom, chow, nom. Choo, 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 choo. Um, and then they're like, uh, yeah. You. And I love that moment too because like because we know – like yeah. these guys are in for it. Yeah. It felt so satisfactory, and it did make these girls seem very otherworldly because mm-hmm. their thoughts were just like, "Oh, this is going to happen." Okay, like, well, kill you guys. we said we weren't going to kill, but I guess yeah. And they're like turning to each other, like, oh, "But I, okay, I guess we have to." And they're really just talking to each other, and the mm-hmm. guys have been totally sidelined and are like, "Hey, um." Why aren't you acting scared? Yeah. And then they're just like, and like yeah. eat them or eat their blood. And then mm-hmm. um, they chomp like, their blood. They, they chomp their blood. Then they like drain their memories and they're like, okay, we're going to leave you. We're just going to walk to the aunt's house. They find out that the aunt is mummified because she's been she staked. staked. Uh, There's so. another thing about vampires in Nightworld is that born vampires, Lamia, are able to stop aging whenever they want. Mm-hmm. And then like turn it back on whenever they want Mm -hmm. um at which point they start aging to how old they would be Mm -hmm. if they had never stopped Mm -hmm. and so when uh aunt b gets uh staked she mummifies because she's going back to her like original original like super old age yeah and then if you're turned you just stay the age that you were when you were bit um and so they arrive and they like they see that they're uh, aunt is dead uh, and then the animal death part is really it is really sad I hate that it happens but I do think it like totally we get who these characters are because mm-hmm. of it so what happens is feel cheap at the beginning Jade is like concerned because she can't hear anything coming from her closed up suitcase so she has a closed up suitcase and she has a cat cage and she's acting super guilty and yeah. uh, shady and her cat Twiggy Tiggy Tiggy Tiggy's so cute. So then Tiggy is in the cat carrier. She goes into the room and she like makes sure no one's around and she opens up the 
suitcase and then she realizes that the kittens she tried to bring more kittens than she was allowed to bring yeah they were like jade you're allowed to bring one kitten when we run away and she's like "Mm mm-hmm yeah she puts one in the carrier and she puts two in the suitcase she's trying to sneak the others but she's too dumb to know that they will suffocate and die because she doesn't understand how living beings are too (laughs) she's really sad and that's the thing she's like they're all in arrested development because they're because of their environment yeah and because they're how the real world works not at all so she's like holding these little dead kittens and she's like oh no they died and like is it kestrel that comes in that's like yeah rowan oh rowan rowan is like jade you were only supposed to bring one and she's like i like kestrel told you you're only allowed to bring one she's like i know that's why i put the others in my suitcase i know and she's like okay well i don't like i can take care of them for you and she's like you're gonna eat the kittens and she's like no i'll get rid of them and she's like, no, I want to bury them. So she goes into the basement and that's where she finds dead Mrs. Burdock. Um, and I, I don't know. I just thought that I really, even though it was very sad to have those kittens be dead. It really gave us an indication of who Jade is. Yeah. So it was used in a very important way. In which that case she, I'm okay with Yeah, that. she's Even like. I'm just picturing two dead kittens. Two little dead breathe. kittens. Very upsetting. Very upsetting. <laughs> I got really sad and had to like uh. hug my cats. But it was. It, it, like it was that she like cares about other life but doesn't understand it. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was important. And we also learned that they're not evil. Mm-hmm. Um, and. Uh, and that's when when they bury because she's like I gotta bury the cats. I'm like, well, we gotta bury Aunt Burdock too, <laughs> or whatever her name is. Aunt, what is it? Something like that. Her last name is Burdock, but what's her first name? Aunt <laughs> Burdock is a root. <gasps> that's why their names. Yeah, they all have tree nature names. names. Tree names. Tree names. Um. So I like how when they find her, they're just like, oh, poor Aunt B. I know. <laughs> Uh, so they bury her in the yard, and that's where, when she's stargazing, Mary Lynette sees them bury the body. Um, and Aunt Opal. Aunt Opal, that's right. Opal yeah. Burdock. Yeah, and she's, her eye sockets were dark holes with dry tissue inside. Her nose was collapsed. Poor auntie, Rowan said. <laughs> I like that. And then, okay, let's talk about the other love interest for Mary Lynette, Jeremy. Yes. He's quiet. He's was He's doesn't really loner. go to school anymore. No. His uncle died mysteriously. So now he just lives alone out. And he has since he was 12. Yeah. Um. He, yeah, he and Mary Lynette have chemistry. Uh-huh. And she fondly remembers the time last year when he sat and watched the eclipse with her. The lunar eclipse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. He's handsome. He is strong. He works on cars. His brown hair. His brown, sandy he's, brown hair. He has so full eyes. He has tan hands. He has tan hands. <laughs> <laughs> tan fingers. Um, and I mean, here's the thing. I thought, isn't this weird that it's like a love triangle between her and him and Ash and it's like vampire, werewolf, oh, regular Twilight. girl? Yeah. The whole time I was like, Twilight, 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 Twilight. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So that's why I also would like thought that he was going to be not evil. Good. <laughs> yeah, because I was like, oh. You're like, oh, Team Ash or Team Jeremy. Yeah. But then it's I was like, like. The correct answer is Ash. Yeah. Uh, Jeremy is evil. Mm-hmm. Uh, so basically he like lost his damn mind. He's a crazy werewolf. He doesn't usually werewolves only kill to eat. And that's like a thing that they keep saying. They're like, look. Don't think that just because someone's a werewolf, they're bad. They're not. They, like, only kill to eat. Yeah, they tell Mary Lynette, like, oh, it couldn't have been Jeremy. Werewolves only kill to eat. Yeah. And she's like, oh, thank God. Phew! (laughs) Fuck you. (laughs) Fuck you. And oopsie poopsie. It's (laughs) not phew. (laughs) Not phew. Because he was killing to protect his territory, which is not allowed no, and also like he killed his he uncle. Killed his uncle, because his uncle was like, "We shouldn't kill things just to kill," and he was like, "Fuck you! I'm gonna kill you! I'll kill you!" And then he killed Aunt Opal because, like, they had a cool rapport. Mm-hmm. But then Aunt Opal told him that her nieces were coming, and he was like, "Um, 
skews, that's really going to fuck up my hunting territory. Yeah. He was cool with Aunt Opal because she only fed off her goats. Yeah. Um, she didn't hunt. And so that's why he killed Aunt Opal, thinking that when they came and found her dead, they would just leave again. But they didn't. I don't know why he thought they would leave. Like, they would probably try to solve the murder. I think he thought it would scare them. Yeah. I think so too. Going back, because he was like, "Oh, they're just like she got staked, not just like yeah." So they were like, "It's a vampire murder. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's a vampire killer, killer, (laughs) vampire hunter, vampire homicidal, or (laughs) it's a vampire vehicular manslaughter, (laughs) (laughs) stakular manslaughter." (laughs) So also, the only thing that can like cut a vampire's skin or really hurt them is wood. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. I've never seen that before. And I liked it. That it's like, oh, that's. We give ourselves tree names, and Mary Lynette's like, why the fuck would you name yourself after trees when you can be killed by wood? And they're like, well, because it's very powerful. Like, Duh. It's very powerful, and we respect that. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was a good detail. That was a good detail. Hey, guys. Kelly here. I just wanted to take a quick break from the show to tell you about a very cool book that just came out called Sawkill Girls. It's written by Claire Legrand, the New York Times bestselling author of Fury Born, and it is definitely worth checking out. Sawkill Girls is a spine-tingling story about three girls who face off against an insidious monster that preys upon young women. It is a tensely plotted and haunting thriller with a supernatural twist, perfect for fans of Victoria Schwab and Netflix's Stranger Things. Courtney Summers, author of Sadie, says, Sawkill Girls is a fresh and unflinching exploration of female friendship wrapped in a spine-tingling page-turner. Claire Legrand doesn't hold back, and you won't be able to put this book down. And Mindy McGinnis, award-winning author of The Female of the Species, calls it an eerie, atmospheric assertion of female strength. Sawkill Girls is available now, wherever books and audiobooks are sold. Now, back to the show. And then? And the un? And And then? then? So, like, um... I, I did like that Mary Lynette is like, this is fucking crazy. I, I just got to go over there and I just got to see Mrs. Burdock. Once I see her, it's going to be fine. Yeah. And like, I'll, I know I'll be, I know that I was being crazy. Like, it's, of course they weren't burying Mrs. Burdock. That's crazy. But she goes over. Mary Lynette, you nut. You freaking, you, you peanut. Silly Billy. Yeah, you, you little, little peanut. peanut. You go to bed. You sleep this off. <laughs> in the morning, she's like, oh, oh I did. Why today? I was being crazy, but I'm going to go over there. I'm going to go over there. Such a goof. I'm going to go. She such goes a over. little goof. And the vampires are being so sketchy. Uh, Rowan answers the door after, like, not answering for, like, 10 minutes. And yes. she's just, like, banging on the door for 10 minutes. And Rowan's like, hello? Look at my creepy feet. <laughs> That's <laughs> She is creeped out by Kestrel. Oh, Kestrel. I think. Kestrel's feet? Uh, no, I think it's Rowan's creepy feet. Oh, they both have creepy feet. Because Kestrel's yeah. like kind of not really interacting with. She Kestrel comes, comes up, up after. afterward, and then so, and she's like, okay, so like the first one had creepy feet, but like this one's a fucking wild animal, and she's ready to kill me. Yeah, she's like, oh shit, I gotta go. And then Kestrel's like, come inside, and she's like, ah, oh, good. <laughs> she's like, I'll go in for like five minutes to be polite. Meanwhile, Mark is like. Till now, like at uh, Jade, because he sees her like dancing around in the backyard. Wait, I know what you were singing just then. Always got by on yeah. my own. I never really cared until I met you. And now it chills me to the bone. How will I get you alone? Anyway, so anyway, he sings that whole make sure thing that I was her. right. Yeah. It's hard, and then right? She sings it, yes. Yeah. She sings it back to him, which is crazy because when he comes upon her, she's dancing to a used car commercial on the radio. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, huh. And she's like, oh, I know that outside music is not allowed. (laughs) I'm so sorry. And then she's like, oh, yeah, you don't know what I'm talking about. She's like, I'm sorry. Um, No, you did. Hello? (laughs) Hi. And he's like, you're beautiful. And she's like, It'd be fun to be in love with you. So I am. I know. <laughs> she has very similar vibes to me to uh, the little dewdrop woman that dies in uh, what is that? Yes, summer in, in, in Forbidden, Forbidden Game. Game. She's like, I am just a little just dewdrop. dewdrop. I'm wearing a blue bell on my head. I was just dancing. <laughs> I was just dancing to this used car commercial. I love you. I love you. <gasps> Do you like my cat? I killed the other two by accident. 
I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that. What? Hello? Hello? Hi. I'm Jade. <laughs> they are cute. They're they are cute. cute. I actually was not annoyed by them, but no. I was very relieved that they were not the focus of the story. Thank which God. I, the back of the book made me think that they were. Like, read the back of the book, even though we already really? got to all the plot. But it made me, it made it seem like it was about Mark and Jade. You're right. Oh, It's like okay. a fucking footnote that yeah. Mary Lynette is there. And then it misrepresents her and Ash. Anyway, read it. Unearthly beauty. Read it. There's something strange about the new girls in town. Briar Creek, Oregon has never seen anything quite like the supernatural grace of Rowan, Kestrel, and Jade, three sisters who move into the dilapidated old house next to Mark and Mary Lynette Carter. Mark is obsessed with Jade, but she and her sisters have a secret. And when Mark and Mary Lynette follow them into the woods one night, they are plunged into a nightmare beyond their imagination because the sisters are fugitives from the night world and their brother Ash is hot on the trail behind them. He's ruthless, gorgeous, and he has orders to bring the girls back at all costs. And when he sees Mary Lynette, he decides to take her too. Like um, she is such a footnote. You're right. Not quite. Yeah, not quite. I mean, thank goodness because Mark, yeah, because they're a bit much. They're just like it's fine for them to always be in the periphery. Yeah, the the fact that she only sprinkles them mm -hmm. across the real plot, I was like, okay, thank goodness. I like them fine. Yeah, because they're too. both weird. Yeah, they're both very weird. Um, and they're weird about each other. They are. They it's are super young love. It is like it's teen dream, hyped up puppy it's like love, Buffy and Angel. It's like, worse. It's worse. It's, it's more worse. embarrassing. It's more embarrassing. It's so much worse. It feels like thirteen-year-old love. It feels like Romeo yeah. and Juliet thirteen-year-old love. Although, how old is our Mary Lynette and Mark? Um, I think because he's younger. He's younger than her. Isn't she a junior or sophomore? I think she's seventeen. Okay, so. Yeah, maybe my exam. So maybe he's like 16 or 15. Oh, I think so. Because she's 17 for sure. For sure. Because she's going to be 18 next year. Yeah. Which is part of the like, hmm, maybe hold off, Ash. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which is way more than Angel and Buffy ever did. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. I just opened my phone and it opened to Twitter, but it was a click call article. But all I saw was the image, which is this. Ah. <laughs> Medical marvel. Meet the 30-year-old man who never lost his baby toe. <laughs> <laughs> but it is just really horrifying. It is really horrifying. They're just all little <laughs> pinky toes. <laughs> That's why I like legit flinched. I was like, ugh. Um, uh, good work, Clickhole. Yeah, good work, Clickhole. That was a good one. Um, Have yeah. you seen... I won't go off on this tangent for very sure. long, but have you seen the video of um, people talking um, like heartwarming uh, stories about the first time people realized the joke of Bart rude? No, but they Look do a lot up. of those. They do a lot of those like Look the first up. time I it's did whatever. so fucking funny on, in our writer's room, we're referencing it like Every single day after we watch it. Yeah. Just, you look it up. Listeners look, look it up. Look it up. Treat yourself. It. Treat yourself. Treat yourself to a good time. Watch it three times. Today, Twitter was literally making me sick. Like, I was just, like, sick from seeing social media. I mean, partially it is because I'm in a really bad place right now. But, like, it was just, like, I was just, like, I can't, I can't all, be yeah, here right a now. A bunch of fucking rape yeah. stories about Brett Kavanaugh. Yeah. 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 It's sickening. It's just sickening. It's, too, it's, it's so everywhere. sickening. And it's I just everybody can't. And it's just horrible. Mm -hmm. It's just horrible. It's not good. No. So I think, yeah, don't worry about leaving it behind. Not going on social media yeah. for a bit. I think, yeah, I think I want to like just skip it for a couple days. Social media truly does make me sick. It makes sick. me sick. There are times when physically I can't. Ill. I can't like mentally handle it. Mm -hmm. And it really makes me sick. It makes me tired. It mm -hmm. makes me like afraid of nothing. Yeah. No, but I just get like panic. Just constant panic. Yeah. Um, I like my uh feelings this like pat this week have been like um basically like I'm on the verge always, like all day, of like screaming, but also like I feel like I have to throw up. Like literally, I'm like, I I need to throw up. Like throwing up slash screaming slash crying. 
mm-hmm. but I don't really do any of those. But then in my sleep, I've been like weeping in my sleep for oh. like, I don't know what, like I'll wake up crying. Oh God. And like, it's mostly because I've been having like straight up horror film dreams, like horrifying, horrifying dreams about like giant spiders and like, wow. like evil killers and like trying to like stop a killer and like. I had this dream where this killer was trying to stab me with something and I grabbed the blade and it, oh, like it felt God. so fucking real like the blade in my hand because I was uh, grabbing it. I know. And then I'm what? dead in my dream but then nobody believes me. Nobody believes <laughs> They gaslight dead. me about being dead. They're oh, like, you're not dead. I'm like, I am rude. dead. And they're like, that's no, you're rude. not. And then everyone's like, you look crazy. Believe women. <laughs> believe women. <laughs> when they tell you they're dead. I mean, they just don't believe me that I'm a ghost and it's just not fair. Yeah. I mean, if you have any kind of history with ghostliness, um, uh, I was going to say um, <laughs> like sexual assault or oh, harassment, oh, sure. it's a bad time to be online. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is a bad time. I think like I, I was looking at my calendar because I was like, I need to figure out a time where I can like literally like run away to Wales for like a week and just like mm-hmm. be whatever cut off cut off and yeah. like not talk to anybody yeah cuz i just need to refresh and like purge whatever sickness is in my brain right now yeah and it's like great that everybody is sharing their experiences so that people can see how fucking common it is yeah but um if you have one of those experiences it's way too fucking hard to keep reading them yeah. all day on yeah. a steady stream yeah it's true it's and it's it's like it'll make you sick it physically ill like sick to my stomach to a point where like i don't feel like eating anything and but then i do eat and then once i start eating i'm like i need to eat everything it's just like a whole you know it's just this whole thing huh. so i wonder if that's why i wonder if that's why i've been super cranky today and went on like a Full ass sugar run at Seven Eleven before the podcast. Yeah, there's a little sack of gummy, gummy bears. bears and I that. ate um, every single part of a king size Twix oh. in the car. I ate every a bag part. of like every. You piece. ate the top, like, all and the, the bottom, and I ate the, the crease. middle. The, I ate you ate the, the, side the part. little part, the I little the part like on the left butt crack of it. I ate the part on the right. <laughs> um, and a little bag of white cheddar popcorn. Um, and a coffee with six um, pumpkin pie spice creamers in it. Yum. I just went, I, ah. uh, Yeah, I just, like, it was funny because I kept forgetting that I was, like, weeping in my sleep last night. But, like, you know, um, after you've cried really hard, like, your chest and your, like, windpipe feel tired and, like, mm-hmm. wheezy? It's mm-hmm. so, like, all this morning I was like, ugh. I feel like I can't get enough breath and that's partially my anxiety and whatever, but like also like just, and then I kept remembering like, oh yeah, no, you were having like horrifying like serial killer nightmares. Yeah. Well, good on you for remembering that because we have talked a lot about um, how we'll be like, why am I so depressed? And it's because we compartmentalized something. Like this horrifying thing. Yeah. 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 I mean, actually, what's been really helping Escape was, like, reading this book, and then also for our Patreon, we're reading Outlander, which is, like, so... Like, I forgot how good of an escape romance is. Mm -hmm. And this book has tons of romance, too. So it was, like, very just, like, silly. Like, the stakes are so high and so different that Mm -hmm. it's, like, you can be, like, oh, right, vampires. That's, like, a thing to focus on. Yeah. Um, Yeah, everything's shit right now. Um, But we liked this book. We did like this book. Yeah. Um, also, like, okay, so the so Jeremy, the guy with the tan hands, uh-huh. he Mr. is tan a hands. werewolf. He, um, like, is protective over her, but then it turns out he, like, wants to turn her into a werewolf. Well, he's like, oh, and now that you know everything, um, I think you'll understand. I always wanted to tell you, and now I can turn you. Yeah. <laughs> Well, first he's like, you'll see once once things change. And she's like, yeah, okay. And then he's like, he's I'm like, going to turn make you. you understand. And she's, she's like, like oh. oh. Okay, no. She's like, hard pass, hard pass. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> oh, you oh, shouldn't have. Look what you got me. Um, <laughs> I get a, did you get a gift receipt? You got me a whole bag of candied pecans. 
Aww. A bunch of almond roca. Aww. I'm allergic to nuts, but thank you thank so Thank you so much. much. I will treasure them. I am going to keep them. <laughs> I'll keep them just right here <laughs> unopened. Door. And then every time I look at them, I run. <laughs> She's like, fuck this. <laughs> like, start sprinting away. Um, she sprints for the knife under her car seat that she usually used to get the gas cap. I know, because she drives car. a jank-ass car. But here's the thing. Would it have been like a fully silver blade? No, I mean, it, it's, what is it, like an heirloom blade or something it's like, like that? like a, oh, this is for like, p- like peeling tomatoes or like whatever the fuck. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember what it is, but I was like, I kind of doubt that that would be silver, but if you're telling me it's silver, okay. Like, fine. Yeah. Oh, I'm so giant. Yeah. I mean, it's like... Yeah, I, I maybe if it were like a letter opener, I would have bought it because people have those fancy uh-huh. type things. But like for something to be actually silver nowadays, how strong very is silver? Rare. Let's see. Well, but this was the nineties, Lindsay. Strong. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. This is see. the nineties. We were still on this <laughs> silver standard. Wait, are you Taurus at all? I am on. Um, I was uh, born May 29th, so it's like just after Taurus, Gemini. Interesting. Uh, I got distracted like because I away. opened my, um, my what's it called, my browser, and I was looking at, do you know Channy? Shawnee Nichols? Shawnee Nichols. Yes, I do. Yeah. She's okay. my fave. She's great. Um, uh, I think I sent her. Yeah, to me. To you. Yeah. So her uh, thing that By she sent just. sent her, I mean sent you a link. <laughs> sent me a link. <laughs> I didn't like, I don't see her in person. <laughs> <laughs> you sent her to me. Um, but uh, Omar, or maybe it was Minzui, sent me her thing about uh, Libra season, and it's for specifically Libra and Taurus people. It says, um, put, a, put a little extra love on your Libra and Taurus self slash friends slash loves, because uh, I guess they're dealing with some tough stuff right now. And I was like, oh, my God. Marnie Schur, uh, who did our write-up in AV Club mm-hmm. and did our show for Dream Date, um, <laughs> I think I think this was her. She tweeted, like, Okay, like you can keep telling me it's Libra season, but like until I know what that means. Yeah. <laughs> I actually have no idea what you Libra season is. You need to tell is. me like every time what that means. The ruler of Libra is Venus. Venus is currently in Scorpio, slowing down to station retrograde on October 5th. That means all the Libra issues are amped up during this particular Libra season. Interesting. Have you ever done a sound bath? I don't know why I said that so loud. <laughs> Sound bath. I said that like like an ant walking through like a Ralph. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. Have you ever done a sound bath? It's like Aunt Opal. Aunt Opal. Wait, I'm, gonna I'm right here. here. I'm right do here. Do not quiet down. Oh, they have gluten free. They have gluten free. Okay, Lindsay. Yeah, they have gluten free. I, I don't. I'm not doing. I tried gluten free. Remember, they have, and I told you it wasn't a problem oh. for me. It turned out. Do you so want I'm not doing gluten free? Gluten free muffins. No, actually, I told you specifically that like it doesn't gluten free doesn't agree with my stomach. Mm-hmm. Oh, but they have walnut muffins. I am literally allergic to walnuts. I will, in fact, die. Oh my gosh, they're having a sale on prosciutto. Cool. Let's get some. <laughs> <laughs> what was I asking you? Do you do gluten free? Is that what I was asking? <laughs> what was I asking? You? Originally. Um, uh, sound bath. Do you do sound bath? <laughs> so the, hey, if you guys are wondering, Lindsay, have you heard of this gluten free? <laughs> have you ever done one before? If you are wondering, what is a sound it, bath? Yes. You lay in a little pit, and then me and Lindsay stand over you and <laughs> scream go, about gluten free <laughs> in stereo. <laughs> gluten free? Have you heard about gluten free? Gluten free. Um, Micah's mom always asks if there's. Uh, oh, at every restaurant. She's like, is it gluten-free? Gluten. And then they'll be like, no. And then she'll be like, you know what? I'm just going to – I just love it so much. I'm just going to get it. <laughs> so she's not gluten-free, but she'll like – or she'll order make this whole big she deal. She like doesn't know what it really no. means. She's like, I'm supposed to not eat gluten, right? She's like, oh, my doctor like, oh, told me I shouldn't it. eat it because it makes me feel weird. So, <laughs> okay. yeah. And then she'll be like, I have to order uh Gluten free, and then she'll if someone else is having something with bread, she'll be like, I just want to take a bite. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cute. That's not how it works. Uh, it's very anytime cute. Anytime you have gluten, it's a problem. Mm. Um, okay. So oh, here's the tweet from Marnie. I just wanted to read it. Please. 
look, here's the deal. You can go on and on about it being Libra season, and that's fine. Go nuts. But you're going to have to explain anew each and every time what the hell it is you're talking about. True. That's at Marnie Sure on Twitter. Follow her on Twitter. M-A-R-N-I-E-S-H-U-R-E. Great. That was a great plug, Lindsay. Yeah. I feel like if I'm reading someone's tweet, I should plug their handle. You should. Seems polite. Uh, speaking of, you guys should really Connecticut. follow. You guys should follow um, do R.L. Follow Stein. Do Twitter do you, do you guys follow R.L. Stein, R. Stein, Stein dot exe? It is killing me. It's, it's so fucking funny. Good. There is one that was like... <gasps> It is. It's like the fear in birthday basement, <laughs> <laughs> and it's like ready, set, basement, <laughs> or something like that. Like so dumb. It's so funny. We're talking about because we updated our reading schedule. Yeah. So if you want to check it out, if you are reading along, and again, we cannot stress this enough. You do not have to. You do you not don't have, have to, to read along. along. You don't have to enjoy to. this podcast. Clearly, we describe clearly, the plot. clearly. Please do not put yourself through this unless you truly want to. Anyway, so we have updated our reading schedule. Yeah, we have. And so on uh, December twenty sixth, we will be covering R.L. Stein's Silent Night. So I texted <laughs> Kelly with like, "Oh my god, <laughs> the fucking tagline <laughs> for Silent Night is Happy Holidays. You're dead." <laughs> or Happy Holidays. You're dead. <laughs> just, it's so fucking stupid. Um, it it's is like really stupid. Got, it is. It's like somebody had been writing taglines for three days straight, yeah. and they were like, "I don't know." Just like they didn't the eat anything. Holidays. Either. They didn't eat anything. I, I skipped lunch because I just wanted to get through this because I want to get home to my kids. It is literally Christmas Eve as it happens, just like by yeah. coincidence. I just want to get, I have to get right on a flight. <sighs> I don't know, like, happy holidays. Like, <laughs> you're dead. You're dead, whatever. <laughs> and Arl was like, I love that one. Like, oh, my God, that's so good. That's so funny. That's really good. It's really good. It's very funny. Um, it's very surprising. It's a good twist. <laughs> <laughs> because you would never think, happy holidays, you're dead. Mm-hmm. Um yeah. You'd think happy holidays. Was that a pile of clothes? <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, teasing. anyway, we're just, just teasing. Ribbing. We're just we're just riffing just about doing it. Doing some ri- some good natured ribbing of our old pal Bob. Okay, who do we think we are of who do we think we are? <laughs> okay, uh-huh. Kestrel, Rowan, Jade. Oh, okay. Who do you who do you think Okay, I think you are uh Rowan dipped in Kestrel. Hmm, interesting. Like just touches. I think you are Kestrel dipped in Rowan with a drop of jade. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty weird. Definitely have a do- drop of drop of jade. A drop of jade. <laughs> Dro- drop drop jo- jop. We did it. Jop. <laughs> that that was, was super Joplin. funny. I'm glad that we <laughs> <laughs> that is really worth it. I'm glad that we kept trying to find a way to make that funny mm-hmm. instead of just accepting that like it wasn't that funny of a uh, uh, transposing. No, but it's not that funny. It's you not know that what? funny. You have to follow through on absolutely everything that comes out of your mouth. Yes, mm-hmm. and once you start, you can't stop. <laughs> you like you're it's not like supposed Pringles. to stop. It's, Seriously, like bits if, are like Pringles. If you, you guys, <laughs> if, if you start doing a bit, it doesn't matter. If you get a bad you, feeling, if you have a if, feeling that's like siren, don't, siren, stop doing this bit, stop doing this bit. Fun. This I, is it's not nobody fun. likes it. Nobody, nobody likes it. Nobody, nobody likes, likes it. it. You should nobody. keep going. Keep going. Keep, keep, even keep if going. You're, even if you can see your partner also doesn't like yeah, it. No, no, no one wants no one, to be in the bit. N- n- no one. Even if you're doing it by yourself. Anyway, you're doing it by yourself. Enough. Do it anyway. If the conversation Keep starts to go going. away from the bit, mm-hmm. you should interrupt and be like, but remember when I was doing, remember when I was doing the bit about yeah. the thing? And then you be because like, if like you had an idea that you weren't able to get out. In it's the just because they didn't hear it. It's just, they just go back it. to it. So even explain it's it. Moved on. Explain it and mm-hmm. keep going. Yes. Harder. That's how you do bits. That's how you do bits. And that's why we have. And that's how you do bits. And that's how, that's why we have um, one friend and that's each other. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> it's like we have sometimes one friend. <laughs> Each other. <laughs> um, yeah, it's... Uh, I, okay, so... Um, then, okay, what happened I in this book? I was very 
surprised by the turn it took when they um, found Rowan Kestrel and Jade eating the deer. Yeah. When so they they see Rowan Kestrel and Jade moving Aunt Opal's body into the forest because they realize that like maybe too close to have it in the garden. <laughs> yes, and when they're hiding, they're hiding in the goat pens. So they smell like goats, mm-hmm. so, so that's why they can't detect that yeah. they've been followed by humans. Um, and they watch them attack a deer, and they're like, "Oh fuck!" They're literally eating a deer mm-hmm. raw mm-hmm. with their hands and mouths. And and you think that they're all gonna there's gonna be a fight or a chase or like, something, <sighs> and then like it's very tense at first, and then Mark is like, "Jade, what are you doing?" And she's like, "What are you doing oh, here?" It's like, "Why are you?" <sighs> I couldn't smell them because they smell like goats. <laughs> and they're like, "Should we kill them? I guess we have to kill them." And then they like talk about it. Yeah, and then but Mark keeps going, Jade. What are you doing? He's also, so shocked. Okay, Mark has lost all sanity at this point. He's like, yeah. <laughs> well, isn't that the fucking ra- it, it, Ain't that the fucking like, breaks? Uh, ain't that the break? Uh, you, you find a girl, you find a girl who uh, you think is uh, the one you love. I'm and sorry. Uh, <laughs> is anyone else seeing that? <laughs> He's like, oh, of course. I mean, of course, like the, the like, per- girl of my dreams. Classic Mark. Classic, classic Mark. Classic is just. Uh, classic Mark luck. Is just, uh, she She drinks the blood of deer. That's, I mean, that's Go so, fig. Okay. Go fig, Mark. Go fig. Should have seen this one coming. And Mary Lynette is like, holy fucking shit. Okay, I got to like try and sneak up on them or something. Like I got to, we got to just get near them and I can like hit them with a flashlight. Mm-hmm. She's not able to do that. No. Instead, well, Mark stops her. I got so annoyed with Mark when he did that. I get that he's like, don't hurt Jade. the right thing. It is the right thing. But when he does it and screams, don't hurt Jade. I was like, shut up, Mark. We're tired of you and Jade. You stupid little 15-year-old. He's he's such a little 15-year-old idiot. I love how the, they're all talking. They're like, we're vampires. You're humans. This is a problem. Mm-hmm. And Mark and Jade are like, no, we're in love. Oh, and then they're like, oh, and there's this thing as soulmates. And they're like, is that what we have? And everyone's like, no. No, you know. <laughs> You're not and soulmate. And that's how Mary Lynette is tipped off that she and Ash are. But I love <laughs> this. So she she feels a kinship with Rowan because it's like we're both protective big sisters. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And she like turns to Rowan and is like, we've got a fucking Romeo and Juliet on our hands. Yeah. Here. But like Rowan did not hear her at all. And it's I like, know. no. <laughs> it is pretty funny yeah. how she's like, I feel this very intense connection to Rowan. Like we're like, on oh the same God. wavelength. Someone is like finally my equal. <laughs> And every time she tries to, like, say something to Rowan, Rowan, like, does not hear her. Yeah. Like, Rowan's just like, I have otherworldly things to think about. <laughs> like, sorry, I'm still trying to process whether or not I'm literally going to kill you. Yeah. I didn't catch your Shakespeare joke. <laughs> <laughs> she does make a lot of Shakespeare jokes. She thinks she's so fucking smart. She thinks she's very well read. That's the other thing is, like, that was a little she much. Ke- she keeps quoting Shakespeare. Oh, yeah. Ugh. So I was thinking, I was like, damn, this is super Pride and Prejudice. And then, yeah, then she outright it. says I it. Know. And then he can quote from it. Yeah. And that's when it gets cheesy again because she's like, <laughs> uh, don't tell me you read Pride and Prejudice. Yeah. It's like, okay, like, it's a pretty well-known book. Here's what I'm like, going to tell you right now. He's Here's been what I'm going to tell you. Hundreds of this years. This is classic, classic Hundreds. fanfic shit. Yes, because I will exactly. tell you right now how many Hermione Draco Malfoy uh, fanfics have I read? <laughs> All of Innumerable. them. Innumerable. <laughs> okay, let me tell you what. Such common... a number has yet to be found. <laughs> <laughs> am I approaching affinity? Yes, I am. <laughs> Who's to say? <laughs> so, let me tell you something very common in a lot of these. Dramione ships. It. I could feel it, and I yeah. haven't even read them. Is Draco Malfoy right? Mm-hmm. Hates humans, yeah, like Muggles. Yes, but guess what? Oh, he starts reading some literature, or oh, Hermione okay. finds out that he reads it, and she's like, "Oh my god, oh my you god. get me and my people." And he's like, "You know, maybe you guys aren't so bad." And then they fuck hard. <laughs> <laughs> so this just uh, it was, was so, so fan It's so fan. This part was so embarrassing. Like it was one thing when it was the like briefest briefest reference to taming of the shrew sure right after in that second meet. one he's like what do i call you i thought that was kind of cute and she's 
she I don't know she quotes it and then he throws the following line yeah back I like and that. she's like oh mm-hmm. I did like that because then she's a little embarrassed she's like oh like oh I think it even says like oh well okay <laughs> yeah I think I have a I actually have a picture of that um but that second time with the fucking pride and prejudice shit and like did I want to hear Ash say I love you most ardently yes I did However, I don't want Mary Lynette fucking going, like, because they were so Elizabeth and Mr. Darcy Mm -hmm. here. It was crazy. I couldn't tell whether I liked that they outright acknowledged that or didn't, but I certainly didn't like it when she's like, don't tell me. (laughs) Yeah. Um, (laughs) All the people in the entire world have read a book that I have read. Also, she is it's a not little. Obscure. She's being a little bit Elizabethy here when she's like, "He's handsome, so he's stupid." Because mm-hmm. I mean, I get it. I get it. Right? She's thrown. Yeah, she's thrown because yeah. he's so fly. He looks so hot. He's super fly. He's super fly. He's super fly. Uh, is there a song that's like super fly? No. Yeah. What is it? Super fly. <laughs> I don't buy it. <laughs> How does it go? Superfly. How does it go? Um, super fly. You'll get your something something by and by. It's from the seventies. Oh, yeah. You know what I was thinking Super of? Superfly. I was something thinking like of, that. Uh, or you butterfly thinking of something? Sugar, from, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that song so fucking much. It's a terrible. It's song. so bad. It's so bad. Uh, Human butterfly, butterfly, sugar, baby. Honey. Uh, I think it's, like it's honey. Later on. Uh, he does definitely say baby at some point. Yeah. I don't know if we're doing yeah. the like <laughs> sugar or sugar baby repri- reprise. <laughs> wait, what is it? Okay, wait, no. It's Okay, um, wait, no. Yeah. Okay, uh, wait, no. Okay, okay, wait, no. Okay, wait, no. Okay, wait, wait, no. no. Uh, no. Uh, how does it go? Butter butterfly. Butter you my butterfly. Butter <laughs> why am I stuck on this? I feel like I'm like a, a little machine that's like stuck. Uh what is it? I hate this. <laughs> butterfly from Crazy Town. Come, my come, come, my lady. You're, You're my, my butterfly. butterfly. Sugar, baby. baby. Come, my lady. Come, come, my lady. Uh, I first saw this music video uh-huh. in seventh grade on a Cancun trip with my parents. Ew. Let me tell you something. Cancun. Here's the thing. Cancun's not a good place to go with Mark and Twee Nugent. Uh, <laughs> Twee. I always yeah, forget twee. that. Um, we were on this uh, bus. And uh, <laughs> and um, my both my parents don't speak Spanish, and this was before I knew any Spanish. And also, I was in seventh grade, so like I was always like, "Ooh, don't talk to me." Mm-hmm. Um, we were on this bus trying to go back to our hotel, and my parents forgot how to say stop um, for the bus. And so my mom just we were staying in the hotel called Oasis Cancun, and mm-hmm. my mom just like stands up in the back of the bus. And screams, Oasis, 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 Cancun. And the bus driver just like ignores her and keeps driving. And we had to wait until the next stop to get off. Because like, no, like she was saying no it so fast and weird. Like she that was it, saying. Yeah. And I remember being like, oh, I wish I could like run oh, away. Mom. mom. I want to sink into this bus seat. Yes. I wish I could just be one with the bus seat. Uh, so Superfly is by Curtis Mayfield. Oh, Curtis. Oh, I know this. Mm-hmm. I re- remember the fish. Yeah. Um, a better song, much better. Oh yeah, Ba-na-na. I remember this part. Ba-na-na. Just waiting for it to get to the super fly part, but I, there's a whole verse. I mean, I don't know. It. We're gonna so get I don't know sued. What I'm doing. We're gonna get freaking sued. This is a much better song. Okay. Anyway, we all know what that song is. If you don't, you fucking heathen. Yes. Look up the 70s. <laughs> Did you watch that Quincy documentary? No. It's uh, it's not like a great documentary, but he's such a an amazing subject that it's still good. Mm-hmm. Where Man, is it? That, what, where is it? Where can I find it? What is it? Fucking huge body of work on uh, Netflix. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's a Netflix doc. Yeah. Nice. I've been too busy watching a ton of BoJack, which may be why I'm depressed also. Ooh, yeah. Don't do that. 
I watched two seasons of that show and I was like, no, yeah. I don't need to keep going. It's really depressing. It's not bad. I just, it, it, I don't enjoy my time with it. Mm. See, I am very, um, what's a, the word? Masochistic. Uh, so I like watch it like that or like, you know, I watch like, mm-hmm. you know, all that like horror and like crime shit and like yeah, forensic I can't files. Deal with it. Uh, have you seen the credits to Forensic Files? No, I haven't seen Forensic Files. <laughs> it's like... I'm not a true crime person. It's like so dated. It's Some of them are from like 2001, but mm-hmm. I guess this one's a long time ago. Yeah. Um, and it's so barely out of the 90s. What's the... Basically okay, still is what's the this 90s. theme song? Okay. Do, 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 do. Is that uh, Law and Order? I know. Oh, yeah, it is. Is it? Oh, do, do, yeah. Do, do, do. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Because it's like the, the da, 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 characters da, 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 in the like, photos yes. of them. Yeah, it's like, like the still, still. Yeah. And it's like they're and then it like sepia toned ish yeah, kind yeah, yeah, of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. Yeah, it is. Okay, let's look everything up tonight. <laughs> <laughs> when you like the book, you have less to say about it. Yes. That kind of, it's like, it goes both ways somehow. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Dun, 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 dun. Right away. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> um, if we get a thousand eight dollar patrons, uh, Lindsay and I will record an acapella version of that theme song. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's we, gonna do it. We will uh, not me getting dragged into a haunted basement. People of torture. are gonna make it. It's happen. going to be like that. Didn't do it. However, what will do it? <laughs> us saying the Law and Order. <laughs> Theme song, which <laughs> I say in very loose terms, acapella. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. What's your favorite TV theme song? I was just going to ask you that, oh actually. My God. I was trying to think give, of uh, Give of top five. You don't have to order them. Just give like five of your faves. Well, I remember always liking the Friends one because it was so catchy. It's catchy, yeah. Um, Cancer Night. Oh, I always, I remember thinking that, like, it was fun hearing different versions of the theme song for different series, uh, seasons of The Wire. Oh. I remember thinking, like, that's kind of fun that we get to hear a different version. I remember not liking one of the seasons ones and being, like, pissed during that entire season. Mm-hmm. Um, what's a really, I love the, actually, the BoJack Horseman uh, theme song and, like, opening sequence yeah. are really good. Mm-hmm. It is. Um, I like the Adventure Time one because it's short and sweet. Yeah, that's fine. That's five, I think. Okay. I'm sure there are mm-hmm. millions out there that I still enjoy. There are some that I hate. Yes. That are like too long and like. Some themes Here's are the like thing. truly horrible to me. I have like, the the music in Game of Thrones is good and fine and great. Oh, but the, it, the opening, opening is sequence so is so boring. boring. It's so I, boring. I will like skip ahead it's so like many very times. It's cool to look it's at, very but cool. it's not interesting enough for me to yeah. want to watch that every time. Same with Westworld. Mm-hmm. Same with all these things where it's like you're watching it being constructed or whatever. It's I'm a like lot of so the like over the parts. Of, yeah, like, it's a prestige oh, television man. thing to do. Like, look, you guys, it's been done. Mm-hmm. Stop doing it. Mm-hmm. If it's been done, you stop doing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and also like just keep it, just keep it short. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What about you? Um, mine, because I I know this because I went to a friend's birthday party and the whole thing was that everybody was supposed to bring in their favorite openings. Mm-hmm. And so I have a list on YouTube. Okay. And it is Muppet Babies. Okay. Flying Nun. Okay. Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. West Wing. Mm-hmm. Growing Pains. I never watched West Wing. I should. It's very good. And I don't know if I'll ever be able to watch it again after Trump yeah. got elected because I'm like, well, it's such a fantasy now. Yeah. <laughs> that is not how it works. Um, so that was already five, but I'm gonna no, say keep going to six keep anyway because my absolute number one is the Perfect Strangers theme. What is that one? I'm what so glad perfect? that you asked. <laughs> she has it pulled up. <laughs> what is Perfect Strangers? It's a TV show where uh, a guy who lives in Chicago works at the Tribune. Uh, his wacky cousin Balky comes to live with him. Why are you Played saying by this as if I should know? <laughs> because you should. This is fun. No matter what the odds are this time, nothing's gonna stand in my way. Like 
Here it comes, here it comes. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I just found one that I hate. Oh, it's okay. We'll play that next. <laughs> you will get enraged from hearing it, I think. Okay, that's it. Ah, I banged my phone into the thing. Okay, ready? Okay. I looked up a list of the worst TV theme songs. Oh, that but makes But this sense. came up, and this is actually one that makes me insane. Okay. I guess we should have asked for the... Men, 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 no! Men, men, men. No. <laughs> Never remember that part. Uh, I hate that. Uh, and yeah, it's I mostly like it. because of what it represents. Yeah, it's actually kind of a catchy theme. <laughs> it's just that and it's just knowing that I hate the show. I hate the show so much. And Charlie Sheen is such a terrible He's person. Such a piece of flaming garbage. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I like the nanny theme song. It tells oh, a story. I love the nanny. How dare. How dare they? How dare. Um, a nanny named friend. I, I like that one because it tells a little story and it's yeah. kind of like fun. Yeah. How? That, fuck that. Yeah. Fuck that. That song's great. Yeah. In fact, I'm pretty sure that was on somebody's list at that party. You know what? Um, I think it, it, a lot of it has to do with if I hate the show. Like, I hate the Family yes. Guy theme because I don't like yeah. Family Guy at all. Mm -hmm. um, like, what are other shows I hate? Big Bang Theory? Well, that's done by Bare Naked Ladies. Yeah, so I it's think not too bad. It depends on whether you like Bare Naked Ladies True. or not. True. Mike loves Bare Naked Ladies. I mean, the thing is... I don't love that theme. Just because I'm like... I, because well, you have the only thing I yeah, it's just associated yeah. with the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's all you know, you know. Yeah, we all get different feelings from things. different strokes. Yeah, yeah. There, there's a good theme, mm. the different strokes theme. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, have so we run who, out of things to say about this? Who knew that this would insert itself? <laughs> <laughs> to our episode about Daughters of Darkness. I know. A book that we absolutely loved. I know. Why have we gotten stuck on talking about it? Because we're sugar crashing because we ate a bunch of candy oh, right before. You ding a <laughs> We fucked up. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. So, the, so the book right. ends oh, with... Oh, we should talk about their blood. Um, oh, we forgot to mention oh my you, God, to you guys the, that they're their, like partly blood, vampire for a second. Um. Um, they do like a blood exchange because they blood, do a blood pact. Blood pact, I guess. Because then they're bound by blood to And their families protect each other. So that's what they do because they found out about the night world. That's the like way that they resolve the standoff. Yes. Which I, oh, that was what I was saying before we got to what? TV theme songs. I was just going to say that's the thing I didn't see coming. How I thought it was going to be a big old chase and showdown. Yeah. And instead, they all stop and then uh, become tied to one another by blood. I yeah. was like, huh. And they're like, now we're family. Yeah. And I was like, okay. I did not see that coming. Nope. Um, and then it's kind of like dot, 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 right? Because, okay, so the whole thing is, is that Ash is sent out there to kind of like get his family together, right? And bring them back to Nightworld. And he's brought there with Quinn, who's like the most telepathic which, vampire. Like, if which, that's the case, why didn't he see through everything? That's what I was wondering. Because at the end, they lie to him and it's fine. I, I Ash is too hot. Ash yeah. must have uh, high, like, oh, he's able to like fight protection. It. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He must be able to really, like, wall off his brain. Like the thing that Snape teaches H Harry, occlumency. Yes. To try and stop um, Voldemort. Voldemort from, from going in his brain. Yeah. Getting his sweet memories. Yeah. Getting his little boy memories. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> I don't know who that could get those sweet, sweet memories from that little boy. I'm going to get those sweet memories from that young, scarred boy. Like an uh, incubus. <laughs> and beautiful creatures. Wait, what? <gasps> Oh, like how he eats his dreams. I thought you meant because we were, like in, we're, we're in a Incubus. very yeah we're in a very musical. You know, it's so. like the song Drive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
I, I try so hard to think of the lyrics to this. <laughs> what? Because it represents the guy that I was dating. How the, my dare very, you? The, the guy I was dating, the very bad guy that like oh. assaulted me. Um well, was um, very obsessed with the, and I we would like he would make me listen to it like nonstop. Mm-hmm. So now I just think of it up and drive like oh. all the time. Well, double fuck that guy then. Yeah. So that's why I have like anti incubus. I think ordinarily I would mm-hmm. be like, oh yeah, that's just like music from like when I was a younger person. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, a guy that assaulted me, Radiohead was playing. Ugh. Yeah. Radiohead. Real 90s. Uh, yeah. Assault music choices. <laughs> <laughs> that's like the early, early 2000s. The, the early only kind 2000s. of music that they play at Fred 52 or 62, 62. is 90s assault music. <laughs> Like I like am constantly like on the brink of having a fucking panic attack because it's like oh, no. Incubus, um, uh, Black Hole Sun by oh, God. Uh, uh, whatever the fuck. Yeah, I don't. I that guy that's you. dead now. Um, um, um Peter Fonda. No, Black he Hole is Sun. Dead, though. Uh, Chris Cornell. Oh, um, he died. Was in. Yeah, didn't he die? Mm. <laughs> hey Siri, is Chris Cornell dead? <laughs> Recent. Oh, last year. Sad. In Detroit. Sad. Soundgarden and Audio Slave. That's right. That's right. Uh, Wait, so was Black Hole Sun Soundgarden or Audio Slave? Soundgarden, I think, right? And then Audio Audio Slave was like, uh, that feels right. (laughs) And a something. And a song. (laughs) 90s assault music. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Um, so don't, don't go to Fred 62 so, unless you want to get triggered <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> while you're eating some, uh, so their new menu is good. I will say to repeat that is Twitter mm-hmm. and Fred 62, Fred 62, a restaurant only in Los Feliz, Los Feliz, California, in Los Angeles. <laughs> Uh, in, Lo- in Los Angeles. So just if you're in the area. And they only play the 90s assault music like after 8 p.m. <laughs> just so you also, know. this only applies if 90s assault music is your assault music. Is your assault music, right. There's yeah. tons of different types of assault music. Yeah, anything could be playing. Anything but could be playing. But our assault music is... Down. 90s like <laughs> early is like, like late 90s, 90s early like 2000s. person who's like kind of into music. Music. Mm, yes. 90s. Yeah, 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 yeah. And person who like, like if they were in high school mm-hmm. is like, I'm into music, so I listen to yes. Incubus. <laughs> yes, yeah. And then Radiohead, if you're like um, on the pretentious, yes, you're side. more pretentious for yes. sure. But I will say, mm-hmm. there's a lot of assaulters that listen to like both of those. Because I would say mine did listen to both of those. Yes. But but Radiohead was not playing, so I'm okay. I think so. But also the fun thing about um, being uh, a sexual predator. Is that um, you can be into any kind of music. Yeah, you can be into any kind of music. It's like very open. And there can be people like all over the world that you've affected that mm-hmm. like um, like it was a blip to you and nothing. But like mm-hmm. they like just from like hearing a song will mm-hmm. be thrown into a fit of yeah. uh, paralysis and um, yeah. stress induced. Uh, it's pretty magical. It's really I mean, it's just like it's the butterfly it's like, effect. It's like an evil spell. <laughs> it's, it's like very magical. <laughs> it's it's and like a it's magical. like um like it's a like, curse, like an evil like, curse, mm, like yeah, um, or like it's like a charm, but like an evil charm, yeah, has been placed upon you. Yes, yes. and it's like it's like, it's like you a curse are like you um, like carry. it's like you're like a cursed object that like anyone who touches you is then like oh yeah, a little you know, bit of it rubs off. On yeah, them. just and like anyone cursed. in your life is affected by it. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you, yeah, it's a pretty strong spell. Yeah, like really, like you Very as an assaulter magic. should mm-hmm. just be destroyed and buried. Yeah, but like, but like you stay uh, around. Yeah, because you're usually fine. You're fine. You're you're Usually fine being fine. a cursed Almost object. Always. You're you're the cursed object. It's fine. Almost always. Well, Almost you're doing always. the cursing. Yeah. Yeah. Cursed. Uh, cur- curse. Curse. You're the cursor. Yes, and we're the cursee. Cursory. <laughs> cursory. <laughs> we're the cursee. cursee. And then anything around it, they're the cursory. <laughs> cursory. Curse. Cursed. Word joke. <laughs> okay. Oh, um, man. We Daughters have of darkness. Rock bottom. Too much this. sugar. Too, we, too much sugar, which came about because I was cranky, probably because of Twitter. It probably because of out. Twitter. I hadn't been thinking um, about it. Yeah. Huh. No, I'm. we're like tired and, and sugared out and my skin feels hot. Which is crazy because we're fine. We're fine before this. 
Oh, it was perfect. Like, it hit what? Like minute 40? Mm-hmm. 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 We For were both like, of us. We were like I feel hyper. like we made each other hit. Or like it was like um, feedback loop. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Any we hope that your eardrums way. are intact and that you feel fine mm-hmm. after having listened to this. Yeah. Um, I say for Great sure, book. 100%, read this book. So good. Read this fucking really book. It's so good. It. Um, so looking forward to the rest of the series. Yes, I can't wait. And Secret Vampire was very good. It was very good. I, w- I think this was better. No, it was because Ash is way hotter. Yeah. Because Ash is like, yeah, so like hot. So hot. He's like way hot. He's super hot. And I could picture like 14-year-old Kelly would have lost her oh my God. fucking shit. Oh my God. Don't over Ash. Talk to me about 14-year-old ah! Lindsay. <laughs> oh, he's so cute. <laughs> I wish everybody could have seen you just then. Uh, you just started like kicking your I was kicking feet my feet and, and, and my, smiling my so big. Paws were like clasped mm-hmm. in my lap. Yeah. He's so cute. This is a varied episode. You got a lot. Roller coaster. You got a lot out of this. Yeah, episode. you did. So you don't um, be fucking happy. Fuck you. We gave lots of advice. We gave lots of yeah. just like comments about the world without just really comments. any help. Yeah. I'm just uh, thoughts. Music. Thoughts and prayers. <laughs> thoughts and prayers and music. <laughs> and, lots of music. Um yeah. And how to get triggered in LA. <laughs> yeah. Or anywhere. <laughs> Hey, there's. I'm sure there's hey. like a Fred Fred sixty two ish place yeah. around you. Probably <laughs> check just, out any hip diners. Just go to you. yeah, yeah, uh, century modern. Anyway, they have a fun French toast that they roll in uh, frosted flakes first. Nope, just corn flakes. Oh yeah, the uh, bearded, bearded Frenchy. Mr. Frenchy. Yeah, that thing's good. Mm-hmm. Anyway, anyway, maybe I'll go there later. Well, they have this new thing called Love Muffins, which is basically like mm-hmm. sausage McMuffins, but Ooh. just like not mcdonald's nice and they come with like a chipotle ketchup which is really good Ooh, and it comes with two which i enjoy because mm. i like to eat a lot nice well i don't live by it no no well next time i'll get it and then i'll eat one and you eat one yay 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 okay <laughs> okay <laughs> next week what are we reading Let's no one knows look at that <laughs> Oh, oh good. My would be stepmother's lonely. mother died. Okay, well that's fun. What? Oh, I just oh, I opened my phone and a text popped up and what happened? And uh, my would be stepmother Brooke, who I love, who I wish my dad had married. Oh, <laughs> her mother died. Oh, that's sad. She was ninety two though. Oh, long life. So, yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, so next week. So <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Oh, it's teacher's pet. Teacher's Pet, Teacher's, Teacher's Pet, Pet by, by Richie, Richie Tankersley Cusick. Um, yeah, uh, so that'll be fun. Yeah. And thank you so much to our Patreon listeners. Uh, you guys basically help produce our Ooh. show. You, I hit my mic. Um, I'm so sorry. It's okay. We'll live. We've survived uh-huh. worse. Yeah. Um, as we've evidenced. <laughs> um, and uh, thanks to you, we get to do cool stuff with this show. And if you're wondering about um, what we're covering this month, we're covering Outlander. Which is mm-hmm. lots of romance. Yeah, be so fun. if you've been um, uh, holding off or considering uh, joining as a patron, um, this is your month. Yeah, this is your month, yeah. man. Uh, and um, if you want to follow our show on social media, we are at Teen Creeps Pod on everything. Mm-hmm. Um, I am at Kelly Nugy, K E L L Y N U G E E. Lindsay Katai, L I N D S A Y K A T A I. I am constantly um, mm-hmm. in awe of how fast you can spell your name. Oh, well, same. <laughs> oh, thank you. But we've been doing it all our lives. So. I know, but when you say L-I-N-D-S-A-Y, <laughs> it sounds so cool. <laughs> thank you. I love it. I love thank it. Thank you. Um, okay. Well, that's it. Those thank are the you things. for joining us. Those are all the things. Keep it creepy. Forever. <laughs> dog. This has been a Forever Dog production. Executive produced by dog. Kelly Nugent. Lindsay Katai, Brett Boehm, Joe Cilio, and Alex Ramsey. For more original podcasts, please visit foreverdogpodcasts.com and subscribe to our shows on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Keep up with the latest Forever Dog news by following us on Twitter and Instagram at Forever Dog Team and liking our page on Facebook.